Hi, uh, after we discussed the different ingredients of the concrete, we are now ready to discuss the properties of the concrete. Most important property of the concrete is what we call the concrete compressive strength. The strength of concrete is controlled by the proportioning of cement, aggregates, water, and admixtures. The concrete strength means the uniaxial compressive strength measured by compression test or a standard test cylinder. FC prime also depend on the sizes and shapes of the test units and the manner in which they are loaded. So you can see a picture below standard test cylinder under the compression machine. So you have to load this portion at the top and the bottom until the cylinder will break. Also, we have what we call the WC or the WCM ratio. Before, it's quite common to know or to use WC, which means water cement ratio. But nowadays, because we normally mix cement with other cementitious materials, so ACI says we can now use WCM, which means water cementitious materials ratio. So you can use either WC or WCM. Take note that this ratio is the most important variable in determining the concrete strength. The lower the water cement ratio, the higher the compressive strength. You can see the next slide. Cementitious materials are materials that have cementing value when used in concrete either by themselves such as Portland cement, blended hydraulic cements, and expansive cement, or such materials in combination with ply ash, raw or other calcium, natural pusulan, silica fume, or ground granulated blast furnace slag. Here is the diagram for the water cement ratio versus the 28-day compressive strength of the concrete. So as you can see, uh, this is the effect of the water to cement ratio on the 28-day compressive strength. If we will be talking about the non-air entrained concrete, we below as the water cement ratio by weight. So if we have to use 0.6, here the corresponding compressive strength is around 26 megapascal. But if we have to lower down the water cement ratio, that's 0.5 the compressive strength will go up that's around 33 megapascal and if we have to use more or lower that's 0.35 or 0.45 here then the compressive strength will go up to 37 megapascal so as you can see if we have to increase or decrease the water cement ratio normally the the compressive strength will also increase. Aside from that, if you have to use the air in train admixtures, meaning you have to introduce minute bubbles, a very small bubbles inside the concrete, it will automatically decrease the compressive strength because you have added uh, some voids on the concrete. So if you are having 0.5 water cement ratio, the possible compressive strength is 25 megapascal. For 0.45, that's around 30, which is lower around 7 megapascal lower. Yeah, so as you can see, there's really a, a large effect on the compressive strength if you have to introduce air in train admixture. Also, we have the specified compressive strength of concrete. What is this? This is normally uh, designated as F sub C prime. F sub C prime again is the specified compressive strength of concrete. It has a unit of megapascal or PSI pounds per square end. The testing procedure to determine F C prime is that test specimen can be used maybe cylindrical, cubical, or prismatic. In the United States, we, they are using cylindrical, and that is what we are following. In Europe, they are using cubes. FC prime is determined by testing to failure 28-day-old 150mm by 300mm height. Or you can use the smaller one, 100mm diameter by 200mm standard cured concrete cylinders at a specified rate of loading. Take note that the cylinders are kept underwater or in a room with constant temperature and 100% humidity. ACI 26.5.3.2D allows built cured cylinders in accordance with ESTM C31 and tested in accordance with ESTM C39. Note that uh, there is also what we call the ultra high performance concrete. We call it the doctal technology. Uh, 28 days, the ultimate strength ranges from 17 megapascal to as high as 150. 
the mega pascal. So this is what I'm saying. The concrete is actually a high-thick material because if you are just mixing it normally, uh, normally you will just get 17 megapascal, 17 to 20 megapascal. Or if you have some knowledge, you will reach around 24 or 20, 28 megapascal, but not as high as 150 megapascal. You need to play with the ingredients so that you will get 100 to 150 megapascal. Here are the standard cylinders. So as you can see, there are two sizes. It can be the 150 millimeter diameter with a height of 300 millimeter or the 100 millimeter diameter or with a height of 200. Also, you can use the cube that with a size of 15 centimeter or 150 millimeter by 150 millimeter, millimeter by 150 millimeter. So there are two curing schemes actually. You can use the standard cured cylinder that is moist cured or submerged in lime water. Also, you, you can have pale cured cylinder. For the pill cured cylinder, the test cylinders are frequently used to determine when the forms may be removed or when the structure may be used. Again, of course, uh, we need to have this type of cylinder so that uh, we don't have to think when to remove. According to this test cylinder, we can decide when to remove the form so that we can also use the structure. This should be stored as near the location of that concrete in the structure as is practical and should be cured in a manner as close as possible so that used for the concrete in the structure. There are several modes of failure for the concrete cylinder. So as you can see, here we have three modes of the standard concrete cylinder. The first one is that uh, there will be cracks, diagonal cracks, that's around 35 degrees with respect to the vertical. If you see this mode of failure, this is due to shear. So we call it the shear failure. Also, there will be splitting or columnar failure. That's the second figure as you can see almost vertical line on the cylinder or a combination of these two either a crack and a vertical so we call it a combination of the two failure aside from that we need to study the stress and strain curve of concrete so when you you put the concrete cylinder under the compression test we can actually write down the data the applied load and elongation of the concrete cylinder so that we can actually draw the stress and strain relationship of the concrete. The stress and strain relationship for concrete depends on its strength, age of loading, rate of loading, aggregates and cement properties, and type and size of specimens. A typical curve for the specimens 150 millimeter by 300 millimeter cylinder loaded in compression at 20 days using normal testing speeds are shown in figure 1.7.2. Here is that figure. So you can see the vertical line is the stress. Actually, stress is the applied force over the cross-sectional area and the strain is just the elongation of the cylinder over the original length. The rate of applying strain during testing influences the shape of the stress strain curve, particularly the portion after the maximum stress has been reached. Also note that in the figure, the lower strength concrete has greater deformability, we call it the ductility, than higher strength concrete. Also, the ultimate strain at crushing of concrete open varies from 0.003 to as high as 0.008. So this is very important in our studies, especially for this diagram. As you can see, the again, the lower strength concrete has a higher deformability. It has a higher ductility compared to high strength concretes for 8,000, 6,000, uh, 10,000, 12,000. So you will see the higher strength concrete will break at around 0 0.003 strain. Some will go beyond it. Also, we have another diagram according to rate of concentric loading. For a very slow concentric loading, as you can see, uh, actually they are almost the same except at after 0 0.003 strain. Depending on the rate, it will vary the ratio of the concrete stress to the concrete cylinder. Also, we have the applications of concrete in terms of its compressive strength. You will be thinking what will be the normal or the usual uh, compressive strength of concrete. Normally, for non pre stress structures, the FC prime should range from 21 to 35 megapascal or in English units, that's 3,500 to 5,000 5, psi. And, 
take note, normally, uh, no, this is not 3,500. It should be 3,000 to 5,000 PSI. Take note that 21 megapascal is equivalent to 3,000 PSI. For the pre-stress structures, we don't normally use low compressive strength. It should be high strength. So that is why it ranges from 35 to 56 megapascal. Again, uh, this is no longer easy to produce. You need to uh, play with your ingredients, especially you can use admixtures. You can combine the mineral and the chemical admixtures to get these values, especially for columns of tall buildings with a very high compressive strength that is 42 to 97 megapascal. Also, we need to learn about the concrete strength development. Concrete actually gains strength with age. Prior to 1975, the 70 strength of concrete made with type 1 cement was around 65 to 70 percent of the 28 day strand. You can actually estimate if you are saying that your design strand at 28 days is 21 megapascal, at 7 days normally it should around 70% of 21, that's around 14.7 megapascal already. But note that due to changes in cement production, more rapid early strand gain and less long term strand gain. So that ACI Committee 209 proposed the following equation to represent the rate of strength gain for concrete made from type 1 cement and moist cured at 21 degrees Celsius. So you can see the formula is that Fc prime at any time t is equal to Fc prime at 28 days times t over 4 plus 0.85 t. Here t is the age of the concrete in days. So you can always compute the compressive strength the concrete at any days. Of course, normally up to 28 days. We don't go beyond it. For type 3 cement, you can also use the other formula. Almost the same form, but except for denominator with 2.3 plus 0.92. If we grab the first formula, this will be the result. So as you can see, initially at age 0 or day 0, uh, there is no strength of the concrete. Actually, the cement phase will start to set at around 1.5 hours and there will be final setting at around 4 hours, which means that it increases its strength. So in this case, for one day, it, it should have gained strength already. So that for three days, the gain strength should be around 46% or, or that's around 50% already. At seven days, that's around 70%. At 14 days, 88%. And 21 days, that's 96% of the 28-day compressive strength. As you will agree later on, if you have to continue that graph, the graph will still increase but very slowly already. So as you can see, the strength development of concrete is really passed at the few days and then suddenly decrease. Uh, it's increasing but in a, a very low, slow manner afterwards. So here, the comparison between standard cylinder and standard cube in Europe for the 150 millimeter cube strength FC prime using ESTM is simply equal to 80% of the FC prime using the standard cube but if you are using a 200 millimeter cube strength then your FC prime according to ESTM is around 83% of the strength using 200 millimeter cube concrete aside from the compressive strength of the concrete we need to know about the cell strength. The strength of concrete in tension is an important property that greatly affects the extent and size of cracking in structures. Tensile strength is usually determined by using the split cylinder test in accordance with ESTM C496. Tensile strength is more variable property than the compressive strength and take note this is about 10 to 15 percent of the compressive strength. So we really have a very low thin cell strength compared to the compressive strength. We have the split cylinder test to determine the thin cell strength. Uh, we call FCT as the split cylinder thin cell strength. Of course, again, this is normally 10 to 15 percent of the compressive strength. So you can see the setup. We will just put the cylinder lying on its side and apply an axial load at both sides. So you will have the axial load P and after uh, when you are applying this one you will be able to get FCT the split cylinder tensile strength according to the formula 2 times the applied force P over pi LD that is the diameter of the cylinder times the length that is the surface area of the 
cylinder. And normally, according to ACI, for normal weight concrete, split cylinder thin cell stand of concrete is around 0.56 of the square root of Fc prime. So this is a certain percentage of the square root of Fc prime. This is, of course, in megapascal. But if you are using English units, that's 6.7 square root of Fc prime. That is in PSI. Another method of determining the tensile strength, we call it the modulus of rupture, actually. We use the standard beam test, ESTM C78. This modulus of rupture is very important when considering tracking and deflection of beams. So as you can see, this is a four-point bending test because there are four loads are applied at four points. First, at the two supports and two points at the top. Normally, the modulus of rupture is defined as F sub R, which is equal to the moment M times C over I. This is the well-known flexure formula. According to ECI, the modulus of rupture for concrete is 0.62 lambda square root of Fc prime. This is in megapascal. This is higher than the split cylinder test, which is 0.56. In English units, that's 7.5 lambda square root of Fc prime, that is in PSI. You will be thinking, what is this alpha? Alpha is a modification factor for lightweight aggregate. So if you are using lightweight aggregate, you can just multiply it with the corresponding value of alpha. Normally for normal weight concrete, alpha is just 1.0. So it's okay for the normal weight to just use 0.62 square root of Fc prime. Here is the comparison of test results for the modulus of rupture of normal weight concrete with ACI code equation. So as you can see, uh, there is really variation of the results. So we just take the, the best fit for the modulus of rupture that is around 7.5 square root of Fc prime or that's 0.62 square root of Fc prime in megapascal. Also for the water cement ratio versus the 28-day compressive strength, you can see here the result and including the flexural strength or the modulus of rupture. Uh, as we discussed earlier, as we use smaller water cement ratio, then the the compressive strength increases. But you will notice here the flexural strength or the modulus of rupture. As we decrease the water cement ratio, of course, there is an increase in the strength of flexural strength, but it's not really that high. So as you can see, it's almost linear. In a concrete mix, after we mix it, we need to know if it is workable, meaning if we can play with the concrete mix. Because if there will be very small amount of water, it would be really difficult. Uh, it's a measurement of workability. And uh, to measure the workability, we use the slump test. Uh, this is a measure of workability which is obtained by the slump test. The smaller the slump, the stiffer and less workable the mix. How to measure the slump? Uh, we can use the, the cone with the diameter of uh, uh, 150 millimeter and a height of 12 in chest. So you can see this cone uh, sample after removing the cone you will see that the concrete mix will go down and the difference between the original height 12 inches to the final position of the concrete mix is what we call the slump. You have to measure that one. And this is the, the example of the slump test and how to measure the slump. Normally, we have the maximum and minimum slump for different kinds of construction. For reinforced putting, normally the minimum slump should be one end with the maximum of three inches. That's 25 millimeter to 75 millimeter, which is the same as plain putting, sky zone, substructure walls. But for slabs, beams, reinforced uh, walls, and the building columns, normally the minimum slump is also 1 inch or 25 millimeter, but we can have as high as 4 inches or 100 millimeter. It's very important that your concrete mix will be workable, especially if you are uh, pouring your concrete in a beam or column where the space is very limited. 
Of course, uh, you can reduce your water cement ratio again, and you can add add make sure that the super plasticizer so that the workability of that will increase. Okay, so so far this is the properties of the concrete, and we will continue this one in the next video. Thank you for listening.